Coming up, we have stories about wedding invite drama, carjacking in-laws, fired babysitters, family name drama, stepdaughters caught stealing, birthday gift drama, family vacation drama, and spicy stories, and cake reward stories. Am I the astronaut for not inviting the girlfriend of my fiance's close friend to our wedding? Girlfriend of fiance's close friend. Okay, got it. Back in December 2020, I-19 female met my boyfriend, Chris 22 male. We are 22 and 25 now, who moved from out of state and things progressed well and quickly. A few months into our relationship, a friend of his, we'll call Sarah, moved to the same state as us. We hung out with her in group settings a couple of times, but she stopped reaching out because she kept asking Chris to go hang out and not inviting me. That's never good. He went the first time, but after that, I wasn't comfortable with it, so he kept declining and she got annoyed, it seems. Now I have to introduce two more people, Brad and Chelsea. These were longtime friends of Chris who were dating. It is important to note that Chris was friends with Chelsea first through work, and then Brad joined the same company. Well, now we can fast forward to 2022, and Brad and Chelsea are going to be moving to the same state as us just an hour away, because Brad got a new job opportunity. He moved first with Chelsea, set to follow him within a month or two. Before Chelsea was in the state, Brad came to visit, and he was a sweet guy, but once she joined him, we didn't hear from them for a good few months. When we finally did hear anything, it was when Brad texted Chris to tell him they'd be down in our city to visit Sarah since she's a good friend of Chelsea's. The text, however, was not an invitation. He wanted to tell us ahead of time in case there were pictures posted on social media. He then said we weren't invited because Chelsea had heard things about me from Sarah and she just didn't care to meet me. I was annoyed, but I had heard things about Chelsea too and wasn't really dying to meet her, so I shrugged it off. I did, however, tell Chris that if he planned on proposing soon, I'd have to meet her beforehand or she wasn't going to be invited to my wedding, and he agreed. Well, in April of 2023, we announced our engagement, and to no one's surprise, Brad and Chelsea reached out wanting to hang out. I told Chris that I had already decided she couldn't come to the wedding, but if she wanted to try to develop a friendship for down the road, we could hang out. Eventually, Chris told Brad that he was invited, but Chelsea was not. Brad said he understood and that he'd talk to her and get back to us. This was probably three months before the wedding. Now it's about three months after the wedding, and we have never heard anything back. My now husband Chris understands and isn't mad at me, but I feel like I got in the way of him having his friend there. So am I the astronaut? We're 22 and 25 now. Ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's candy buddy. So so names I need some I need some reminding okay. on here. Okay, so um Sarah was trying to hang out with OP's boyfriend. Chris. Um and she put a stop to it, which is normal because you either hang out with the couple or not at all if you weren't friends before. Um and then Chelsea and Brad are a couple. Um and Chelsea heard stuff from Sarah. And so Chelsea doesn't want to be friends with OP because of what she heard from Sarah. Right. That's that's what I got from it. Okay. Um, I think women need to stop assuming things about each other and just ask. Because when you assume things, like what's the saying? It makes an ass out of you and me. And I feel like you and Chelsea might have been able to be friends. But you both took what you had heard about each other and drew an opinion. And that was final. And I feel like if you if we just stop stop saying oh i've heard this draw a conclusion for yourself and don't listen to what other people say you can take into account what they say but make your own opinion form your own thoughts just we have to stop (laughs) women have to stop being mean to each other and stop putting each other down like and this is a prime example of where like these two women haven't even met yet and they already don't like each other because of what they've heard from another person and i think that sucks which if you look at this from the high level i mean that was that was orchestrated by Sarah, right? For, for was, sure. I mean, obviously. Sarah pulled the shit, strings yeah. with Chelsea to make sure that there was beef there before you guys had even met each other. Right. Uh, and that's something we unfortunately see a lot of, especially when you've got people who like to control people. They will create scenarios to cause conflict mm-hmm. between two previously disconnected people just yep. to try to make sure that they have their alliances set up and firm. This was probably more about 
Sarah not wanting to lose control of Chelsea or to lose her on her side, thinking if you two met, right. um, Chelsea might actually like you. And then Sarah is going to be on an island here, right? So uh, <laughs> which- it's so messed up. It's so like, and you hear it, and I know, like, I I don't think that guys have this issue, um, but it it sucks so bad. But I feel like if you if you say what you mean and mean what you say, um, a lot of problems between women could be solved because it seems to me that Brad and Chris don't have issues, and their issues are with their significant others and. Sarah is causing all these problems behind the scenes and you and Chelsea are just letting her cause those problems and you're just adding fuel to the fire instead of just being like, hey, you know what? I am going to talk to Chelsea. I am going to befriend her and I'm going to make sure that she knows exactly who I am and that she doesn't have to believe what Sarah is saying about me. Yeah. OK, so so OP, um, the the best way to render someone who's trying to orchestrate beef between two other people powerless is to do exactly what Candy Thunder is saying and and ignore it and and draw your own conclusions. And right. I mean, this is just an added petty benefit, but her blood would boil if you and Chelsea ended up becoming friends here. Part of this, so part of it feels like, you know, OP, you're I, I don't know that you care that much except for feeling guilty because it affected your your partner, right? Uh and Right. You may not care to be friends with these people other than that. And that's fine, too. And it kind of seems like, you know, you had this drama avoidance plan where you had heard things about Chelsea and her connection to Sarah was just like, it's it's not worth the effort to the risk isn't worth the effort of of trying to befriend someone who has already already made up their mind that Mm -hmm. they don't like me because of somebody else's word. And I understand that. Um, I completely understand that. It also seems like Chris doesn't really care either. He says it's not a big deal. I know you feel guilty now, like you're making him lose friends. But guess what? If his friends weren't willing to warm up to you, weren't willing mm-hmm. to give you a chance, weren't willing to meet you, then they made the decision about their friendship with him. Agreed. So I don't think you're responsible for that. There was another option, and that option would have been uh, you're going ahead and meeting Chelsea anyway, but they got to sound like shitty people and they made the decision. It's not your responsibility to do that. It would have been possible, but it's not your responsibility to do that. I agree. And I think, um, extending the (laughs) invite were, were Chelsea and Brad engaged. I, uh, I think they're, aren't they a married couple or just a couple? I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it said, but I mean, extending an invite to Chris, um, without a plus one, if they aren't married, I don't, I mean, yeah, you knew what you mm. were doing, but I mean, you don't want drama at your wedding. And if you don't know the person and she said she was she would give her a chance down the line if she wanted to like actually put effort into having a friendship down yeah. the road, then um I don't think you're in the wrong. I think it just it sucks that people taint other people's opinion of someone without ever having met them. And yeah. I think that part is the one that's what sucks the most. I mean, people who taint things are halfway to an asshole anyway, right? <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> that was good. This is why I married this guy. This story comes from the AITAH subreddit and is titled Not Quite In Laws Tried to Steal My Second Car. My fiance's father's car broke down and he asked if he could borrow my SUV for a couple of days. I have two cars and the SUV isn't my daily driver, so no big deal. Sure, borrow the car. I knew that realistically it was going to be more than two days and I was initially happy to help. Fast forward to now and my in-laws have had my car for 21 days. Three whole weeks with zero communication, despite my direct efforts to get an answer. My in-laws have barely said thank you, didn't offer any money, and I've asked for my car back three separate times. My father-in-law is horribly cheap and stubborn, and I love him, but he's been tinkering on his broken car at leisure while continuing to borrow mine. When I asked him directly when he expects his car will be working again and all parts installed, he was unable to provide any type of time frame and just said... He's working on it. 
He's uncomfortable talking about anything related to money aside from complaining at how expensive everything is, so I tried not to push the issue because I wanted to respect his boundaries. Today, I had my fiancé tell his parents they need to give me my car back. It's no longer a choice. I want my car back. I need to use it tomorrow. Although it's not my daily driver, it's still my car and I have it for a reason. It's completely beyond my level of comprehension why I would need to explain to anyone that I would need my own property back because I have a task that I'm unable to achieve without it. In the kindest way possible, I'm the only person in this situation that owns two cars and it's starting to feel like I'm being disrespected because they don't feel like I need it or that it's not putting me out when it is. The whole thing makes me wildly uncomfortable and I'm low-key worried they trash my car because we have completely different standards of living. In all of this, my fiancé, their son, also has his own car. So it's like, dude, go borrow your son's car for a bit. For context, we live in the U.S. and my fiancé is the highest paid person in his immediate family and he is the youngest child. We live in a high cost of living area and are broke AF. His parents are 65 and I'm 34. Everyone works full time. Am I the astronaut for wanting my car back so I can go pick up my dog? These people are making me feel crazy. We have an update. There is an update here. So what are your thoughts on that? To well, this point. Uh, to, to this point, I would be repoing my own car. I mean... We, we can ask, and then when the asking goes away, you just make it happen. So we're just making it happen. The car is coming home with me. I, I have, I have a, a fear that, that OP's partner in this situation is receiving some communication, but not clearly passing that along uh, or trying to act as, as the buffer. Um, that, that, that could be very true. I mean, be. We at least try for like the last clear message of, yes, hey, this is by this time, this day here, figure the rest out on your own. Yeah. But I, I'd still repo my own car. Do what you got to do, man. Yeah. You got, you got to do it. I mean, that's, that's my car. I, but I think there's got to be, uh, I think the one thing that I'm not hearing a lot of in this story so far is like really clear communication between these partners, because it would be, I, I feel like it's. It's her husband's parents. I feel like there's a responsibility on husband here to communicate those things and to communicate the severity of the situation and be like, hey, knock the crap out. Like, we're coming to get this car now. But it doesn't seem like that's happening. It seems like OP is having to take lead and run point on that communication right back or right now. And that feels weird. You're probably right. And I, I think that's not my default because like that's not the world we live in of you communicate with your partner. About the things, uh-huh. so the, the that lack of communication wasn't a default thought. Mm. I just assumed that those kinds of things would be Word. conveyed. Yeah, I mean that's what would happen in our world. Yeah, yeah. But it seems like well, if Op is having to make the communication directly to his parents, to her partner's parents, there's a bridge that's missing in there, right? Yeah, we need to we need to build a better bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully the update will clarify some things. Let's see what the update says. Yeah. All right, we'll dive into that. Do it, Doug. Thanks so much, brother. Oh, yes. Happy Mwah. birthday. Okay, we're going to dive into the update here and see where it's going. Update, I got my car back today, and my in-laws were incredibly apologetic. There's a plot twist. I didn't have to steal my car back or call the cops, but my fiancé demanded I get my vehicle back, and now I better understand everything that happened. Okay, the fiancé demanded... Th- okay. Fiancé agrees that if the need presents itself again, it's up to him to be more accommodating to his folks, and I've learned a new boundary for myself. It's a win-win. I accept some level of responsibility for not putting my foot down sooner and being too nice to people taking advantage of that. Thank you to everyone that's helped me navigate the situation, and thank you for letting me know I'm not an a-hole or a crazy person. Okay, so... we. I mean... It resolved itself. I still don't feel like we have a ton of, of clarification there in in what happened with the the communication flow here between between the partner, except saying that my fiance demanded I get my vehicle back, probably two parents. And and it took to this point for that to happen. So if that's where if that's where fiance finally stepped in and, and was like, OK, uh, no, this this has to be resolved now because it's it's horseshit. Uh, it took way too long. And that's one of the problems that I have here is that I think in these kind of situations, forcing your partner to communicate directly with your parents about a conflict without jumping in immediately and trying to facilitate that for them or mediate or do something seems like a big load of horseshit to me. And and I'm reading, I may be reading too far into this, but but because his 
his involvement isn't directly stated until the very end here. I feel like he dropped the ball on that. And yes, they took advantage of the whole situation, but it was probably one of those. Well, until somebody forces us to do it, we're going to do it kind of things. And uh, and and they did it and ran it in the ground. So hopefully that's clearer now. She says she's developed a new boundary for herself. He finally stepped in. So he understands that pain better and says, um, if something like this happens again, he's going to be the one that that jumps in and facilitates. So so it sounds like everybody's learned a lesson. The initial question of am I the astronaut for um, am I the astronaut? Not quite in laws tried to steal my second car. And the, the question was basically. Um, am I the ask not for wanting my car back so I can go pick up my dog? Hell no. Hell no. This could, I'm how you're 34. How long have you been together? We don't really get into that a lot. How long this relationship has been going on. And I guess it takes getting into some uncomfortable situations for, for, uh, for solutions to be needed and to be present about communication flow. Some people are just bad at communicating, especially with family. Um, so so maybe they just never encountered anything like this before and never had a need to establish the flow of communication. But now they have it. Now they've learned the lesson and hopefully nothing like this ever happens again. But if it does, they have at least a better plan of how to fix it. From the AITAH subreddit is titled, Am I the astronaut for not leaving my wife so my daughter could live with me? (sighs) My wife and I have been married for seven years. We both have 15-year-old daughters. My wife's daughter has lived with her dad her entire life. My wife is an excellent mother, but her ex was moving across the country, and she knew he could give her a better life than she can. Two years later, they moved back to his home country, approximately 12 to 18 hours from us by plane. They flew my wife out to visit them a few times a year, and they sent her to visit us during the summer vacation. He got a job approximately a half hour from us, so we've had her 50-50 for the past few months. The thing is, we have a two-bed, one-bath house and a good neighborhood. My daughter has had her own room her entire life, and she did not take it well when she heard she had to share. She's tried blocking my stepdaughter from their room, threw her stuff out the window, and tries to make my stepdaughter uncomfortable so she'll leave. Last week, my stepdaughter got here, sat on her bed, and almost immediately ran out coughing and covered in a rash. My wife had to use her daughter's EpiPen and called 911. We didn't have a car at home. She and her ex got into a fight at the hospital and she got kicked out and her ex is refusing to allow her stepdaughter into the house. Ex is legally able to do this because he has full custody. We have a camera to monitor the dogs and if the bedroom door is open, you can see into the girls' room. We had also just moved the camera and haven't gotten around to telling my daughter yet. We decided to check the cameras and we saw my daughter bringing nuts into the room and eating them on my stepdaughter's bed before touching everything my stepdaughter owns. My stepdaughter is deathly allergic to nuts. Nuts are not allowed in the house. But you are allowed to eat them in the garage and you have to scrub your hands before you come back in. My wife, understandably, was furious when she saw it. She stormed into the girl's room, started screaming at my daughter, told her to get the F out of the house. I talked my wife into letting my daughter pack a bag and I arranged for my brother to pick her up. My wife is adamant that my daughter is no longer allowed to step foot inside her house. We filed a police report and the plan is for her to stay in a group home or boarding school for the next couple of years. Now my family and my daughter's mom are pressuring me to leave my wife so I don't have to send my daughter away, but I'm refusing to leave and I agree with my daughter's punishment because she nearly killed a person and caused my wife to lose her daughter. Now I'm being called a bad parent by everyone except my brother who is putting her to work on his farm until we find a more permanent arrangement for choosing my wife over my kid. Am I the astronaut? Oh my gosh. This is a fuster cluck of a situation. Um, uh, It's a mess. You know what I didn't hear throughout this that I really needed to hear was why? from the daughter i needed to hear that they sat the daughter down and talked to her to try to understand why she was behaving this way and obviously it's because you know op assumes it's because she has to share a room for the first time in her life so she's doing all these shitty terrible things but there were it doesn't sound like was ever a conversation here to really dig into like what is it about 
having this other person here? Is it just because you don't want to share? Or is it is it something specifically about her that do you two agitate each other? What is it? We never dove into that conversation because it never happened. And even if it, clearly it got to a point where there's got to be some punishment, has to be some kind of punishment. You can't intentionally try to do something that almost unalive someone and then just be like, oh, yeah, I guess, you know, well, everything's fine. No, it, you're you're 15. You're going to have some punishment for that. It is 100 percent not OK. There has to be a very, very, very painful lesson to create the needed change for this. However, I also feel like on top of that, there has to be some deep, deep discussion into the drivers behind that, because OP right now, you don't understand all of the motivators behind it. You don't understand what it's going to take to be able to truly fix this because you don't, you haven't dove into everything. The punishment's going to happen regardless. But if you're really trying to fix whatever, whatever these drivers were to, to make sure that your daughter doesn't end up back in this situation later on in life, it's going to take deep diving in here. And yes, that can be a therapy thing too. And needs to be a therapy thing, too. But just having to share a room is no excuse to try to unalive someone. It is not okay. And the people in your family that are calling you a bad father, what? So the behavior is okay? It's okay to just do this and, and intentionally try to, at minimum, hospitalize someone, if not unalive them, because you didn't want to share a freaking room? It's got to be more than that. It has to. Please tell me it's more than that. Otherwise... You're just an evil human being, and you would like as a parent to think that your kid's not an evil human being, so please tell me there's a good excuse for this, please. And that's the conversation that I didn't hear happen, and I'm like, there's got to be more of a dive in there. There has to be. The whole situation is messy for everybody involved, but the family members who are chiming in just based on their version or their perception of whatever the hell is happening here can shut the hell up and go away because they're not helping anything. They are not contributing to a solution in any way, shape or form. So just shut them out. doesn't matter. Your brother is helping by putting her to work until you find some kind of more permanent thing. But there has to be until you know what the real root of the problems are. You're not, you're not going to be able to really point a solution or put a solution in place because you don't know how bad the problem is you're trying to solve. That's my point. It sucks. It's rough. Leaving his wife isn't going to solve anything. Well, she's not going to have to share a room anymore. Well, guess what? Whatever program she gets put into, she's probably going to end up having to share a room with somebody. And that would be a, a good monitored solution to figure out how she handles that. Um, and if somebody's capable of doing this, there's there's some evil. There's some evil there. There's just got to be. There's got to be. There's got to be some great care and a very in-depth Solution taken seriously here. Am I the astronaut for not leaving my wife so my daughter could live with me? Uh, no, you're you're not the astronaut for that. However, so so on that very specific question, no, you're not the astronaut for that. But I feel like there's a lot that needs to be done on all fronts here. And yes, I agree. This isn't everyone sucks here because to some degree, everybody sucks in this situation. There's got to be a, a lot more care taken to go through this and figure out what the real problem is. But this is just a mess. This one is titled, Am I the Asking Off for Stealing Someone Else's Cake? This is the cake crime story. Man. Here's how this story goes. Hey, Dusty, longtime follower, and I love the content. I have already decided that I am the asking odd on this, but I know everyone loves cake stories, so I thought I would send mine in. My husband's birthday snuck up on me this year. Usually, I try to put together a party, get together at the very least, make him a nice dinner, and bake him a birthday cake. Things in our life have been very chaotic lately. I'll spare you the details, but let's just say that I could also send in several mother-in-law stories. With all the craziness, I forgot about my husband's birthday until I woke up the morning of his birthday. That's unfortunate. I was able to hide the fact that I forgot his birthday by saying, you'll have to wait until you get home from work for your birthday surprises. On the inside, I was panicking knowing that I would have to throw something together on short notice. Once my husband left for work, I dashed off to our local grocery store to get all of the items to make a nice dinner. I called my parents, his parents, and his brother and invited them all over for dinner. Luckily, they could all make it, and no one gave me much grief about it being last minute, except for my mother-in-law. Shocking, I know. We live in a small town and there is only one local grocery store. I knew I wouldn't have time to bake a cake, so I went to the bakery department in the hopes that they had cakes in stock. 
To my dismay, they did not have any available. The only things they had were cheesecake, which my husband hates, and carrot cake. Then I noticed a shelf with four beautifully decorated cakes on them. Oh no, I think I know where this is going. Oh no! Oh no! Apparently, these were the pre-ordered custom cakes that people had ordered and were picking them up that day. Three of them had specific names on them, but one just said happy birthday. I'm not proud of what I did next. I looked around and made sure that the employee working in the bakery couldn't see. I grabbed the birthday cake, took off the order slip, and put it in my cart. I dashed off to the self-checkout and rang up all my groceries and left with my stolen cake. Clarify, you still paid for the cake. It's not stolen. It just wasn't yours. So I guess it is still stolen. Uh, This is my paid-for stolen cake. The dinner went off without a hitch, and my husband had a great evening with our family, and everyone enjoyed the cake. Even my mother-in-law complimented my choice of cake. I put on a smile, but on the inside, I felt so ashamed. I know that it was wrong, and I shouldn't have done it, and I know the guilt is, and now, the guilt is eating me up. I'm not sure that there is anything I can do to make up for it. I feel terrible that I ruined someone's birthday. I will accept my relegation to whichever ask on planet I am sent to. Am I the astronaut? All right, Opie, you know, uh, you knew it was wrong. Uh, I think it was a a moment of desperation here. The one part of this where I think you definitively become the asshole uh, is that rather than flagging that employee down and saying, is there any way in hell this can happen? Is there any way in hell that you've got a cake partially prepared back there that you could whip up for this? I understand it's it's, it's crazy last minute. Um, And instead of doing that, just just took the cake that was on the rack there that didn't have someone's name on it. Um, I understand why you did what you did. And I, I understand that, you know, you're the, the ask and for this, which I appreciate. So just being able to admit that you are gets you some points here. Not that, not that it mattered at the time though. So chat, what do you think here? Where, where would we go? Could have done it differently. Obviously should have done it differently. Obviously definitely shouldn't have done that. Agreed. Is this an evil, terrible human thing? Keep in mind, whenever whomever's cake or whoever was supposed to have that cake that got lifted and, you know, OP paid for it at self-checkout, but it was still intended for someone else, they surely would have alerted the employee because uh, I don't think you're supposed to pull directly from that rack anyway, most likely. The employee would have been like, holy crap, the cake is gone the bakery would have had to make another cake quickly for them or repurpose cake for them. The bakery would have had to, to do that for them. So they may have had to stand around and wait a little bit, but they still probably got their cake. So I don't know that you ruined someone else's birthday. It's just the pain that you would have gone through. If you had flagged the employee down and said, Hey, is there any way in hell that this is possible? The person who, who you took the cake from ended up having to go through that pain because they were forced to wait for the employee to scramble to do all that. So, uh, it's, uh, uh, beer today. That was the same freaking thought that I had plot twist. It was the mother, the mother-in-law had ordered that cake as a backup cake. And she's like, yeah, that's why she complimented the kind of cake that you got because it's the exact same one that she ordered. And how cool would that have been? That would have been fantastic. Uh, Santana. Yeah. You make a really good point there. The employee probably got in trouble. Maybe, Maybe. I mean, at the end of the day, if they if they made the cake and if they knew that they had put the cake there, but also most grocery stores have some kind of security footage, too. So they probably were able to track this back and and see who actually took it, which would have been hilarious. Uh, yeah, we're we're landing on two. It's you definitely shouldn't have done it. I don't think you're evil for doing it. It was a poor choice. Uh, and you know that it was a poor choice. I'm guessing whoever's birthday it was that you took the cake from. They, their birthday wasn't ruined. It was an inconvenience for whoever was picking up the cake. I'm sure the employee was pissed off or frustrated. I don't think this is something they would get fired for because they had fulfilled that. The OP took the ticket off, took the fulfillment ticket off of it. and may have just left it behind right then. So then the ticket's there. Clearly, the cake has been lifted. They can go back and look at the footage and see who took it, but they still paid for it. So it's it's a mess. It's obviously a mess, but it would have been so much fun if it was the cake that the mother-in-law ordered. And she was like, I have been looking for that. You know, I went to pick up my cake today at the bakery and they said that someone had stolen that cake and it looked just like this one. That would have been funny as hell. It would have been good.
Am I the astronaut for firing my babysitter? Every Friday evening, my husband and I, 29 male and 29 female, hire the same babysitter, 18 female, to watch our three boys, three, five, and seven, while we go out for a date night. For the most part, she has been great. Shows up on time, the boys love her, and they typically just hang out at home and watch a movie. This past Friday, she had come a bit early, and I told her that she could take the boys out to the neighborhood playground, since they were being pretty rambunctious. The neighborhood playground is maybe a three-minute walk from our house. It's small, but the boys enjoy it. She texted me an hour or so after we left and said she was taking the boys to the park. I thanked her for telling me and went back to enjoying my evening out with my husband. When we got home, she gave us the regular report, telling us they were well-behaved and had their dinner. And as she and I were in the middle of talking, my five-year-old bounced up to me and told me they had gone to a different park that was a 10-minute drive away. This girl doesn't have a car. Oh, as a parent, yeah. There are some definite red flags right there. We didn't leave her car seats. Oh, you are. I looked at her and she told me that her dad had driven them there in his car since there were no other kids at the neighborhood playground. I was immediately irate. I don't know her father or if he had seats for the boys. I hadn't known where they had gone or have been asked if she could take the boys to this park. I paid her for her time and told her this would be the last time she babysit my children. The girl's father has called me and told me I am an astronaut for firing her for something as small as taking the boys to a park and called me a controlling helicopter parent. My husband and I think we made the right call. Am I the astronaut? Reminder, these kids are three, five, and seven. It's not the 80s anymore. Babysitter's dad, it's not the 80s anymore. It's not, you can't just like throw a bunch of kids in the back of a station wagon and let them roll around as you go across town. Beyond that, even if it was the 80s and you didn't have to have the the kind of booster seats and car seats that, that you do need to have now, you sure as shit have to communicate with the parent of a child if you are taking them somewhere that is not someplace they've been before, not someplace that you had clearance to take them ahead of time. You have to communicate those kind of things. What if something happens? What if they need to quickly find their children? They have no idea where they are. It sounds like now to be fair to, to be fair. I don't know how, how the, the babysitter's dad got involved with all this, all of this shit went sideways when he showed up, right? Maybe this was his suggestion and he showed up and he's like, Hey, let's go do this. And she's like, yeah, but we don't have car seats. And he's like, ah, to be fine. Because as soon as there was a problem, he called up OP here and said that she was being a helicopter parent controlling asshole. So he's clearly a source of a lot of problems here, but it doesn't matter. There's no, there's no separation between this girl and her dad. She knows She's babysat for them for a long time. If they were going somewhere different, she knows that she should have communicated that. She's smart enough to do that. She's 18, unless dad just convinced her not to. Either way, as a parent, I would be absolutely on fire, on fire. And if this dad had called me up telling me I'm a controlling helicopter parent asshole, <laughs> we'd have had words. We'd have had we, we would have met at a park. And had some words. Not okay. You abused. You abused the freedom that you had. So you don't have it anymore. It's as simple as that. NTA, OP. NTA. I don't know. I mean, as a parent, if if you had a sitter who did that, I think calling CPS is dangerous for you as a parent, right? I mean, you definitely don't let those people around your kid again. This is from the AITA subreddit as well and is titled, Am I the astronaut for refusing to let my parents rename me? What? My 15 male parents gave my sister, 16 female, brother, 13 male, and me mature names and more specifically. Water nature names. My sister is ocean, I'm cove, and my brother is a river. They wanted our names to have a theme without being matchy with the same initials, so we got our names. The story was told to us when we were little, and my parents were proud of the names that they gave us. Back when we were all stuck at home, my parents started to express regret about their choices for us. They actually told us over dinner one night that they wished they had given us better names and apologized for making us live with the names we were given. A few months after that apology, my mom and dad told us they wanted us to be Elizabeth, sister, James, me, and Michael, brother. 
Is this you beer today? Did your name used to be Cove? Holy shit. They said since we were kids and weren't in college yet and nobody had their license, at that point it would be the best time to do it. All three of us said we didn't want to change our first names. My dad looked into whether they could do it when we said no, and all answers he got pointed to were a very strong no. But it was also unusual to change your older kid's first name, so they went ahead and tried anyway. But once we were asked if we wanted different names, they were told no. My parents brought it up to us a lot afterward. My brother asked why they wanted to name him Michael and said the name was crappy. They told him Michael was a timeless name that would age well and give him some nickname choices. He said he hated it. So they asked if he would consider Charles instead, which he said was an even bigger no. Our parents focused really hard on him for a while because he had asked the question about the name, so they figured he was the most open. So far, none of us have agreed to the name change. I told my parents that I know they regret the names, but we're all used to and like our names and don't want to go for more boring and common names. My parents argued that in the future, we will regret it and we'd have to pay for it ourselves when we're adults and we realize having weird names does not age well. I asked why they can't just let us get there if we ever do. They said we should be thinking more of our futures and they accused me of having a really bad attitude because I said James was as bad to me as Cove is to them now. They told me to look online, and I did, and I saw a lot of hate for our names. But I told them it still didn't change my mind. Where did, where did you find a lot of hate for your names? My parents said we should all respect them enough as parents to allow this, and that we're all being disrespectful. Am I the Askonaut? Hell no, you're not being the Askonaut. Your parents are being extremely dis disrespectful to you as individuals. You are 15, 16, and 13. Why the hell would you let your kid grow up to become a teenager to accept who they are as an individual and then be like, we'd like to change you? And to OP's point here, let them get to that point. If they get to the point where they want to change their names, let it be their choice. Why are you waiting until they're teenagers to be like, yes, we want to change your names? Let them let them make the crap bag and Princess Consuela banana hammock choice if they ever want to at that point in life. Let it be their choice. They like their names. Why are you trying to change them? And if this was going to think be a thing that you did, you should have done it way sooner. Waiting till a kid is in their freaking teens. What are you going to uh, kids going to show up to school one day and be like, yeah, I'm not Cove anymore. I'm James or Michael or whatever. That's going to make things way more weird and painful for them than leaving them the way they are now. Who gives a shit if somebody doesn't like their name? As long as the person who has the name likes it, that's all that matters. Why are these parents caring so much about what other people think? I just don't understand. I'm sure there are a lot of people that, that don't love the names we chose for our kids. And you know how many shits I give? This many. None. Don't care. If someday our kids decide they don't like their names and they don't want to change them, cool. Do what you want, man. But you don't let a kid get comfortable with who they are and then try to rip that rug out from underneath them at 16, 15, or 13. You just don't do it. And them placing the opinions of strangers over the wishes of their children says to me that they are asshat shitbag parents. <sighs> You know what? I'm going to I'm going to send them all the way up to here to ask on one because this is malicious. This <laughs> guys gave me a round of applause for for choosing an ask on rating, but you ready to burn me at the stake for forgetting to hit the freaking record button? What kind of fickle audience is this? This is malicious. This is them giving more shits about what strangers think than for their own kids feelings or who their kids are as individuals. They let them become cove ocean and river and then they're like yeah we don't like who you are we don't we don't like how how people on the internet talk about your name so we're going to completely change them no no you're not or make a deal here op and be like okay we will only change our names to the names that you want us to have if you father become crap bag and you mother become princess consuela banana hammock because people on the internet don't really like your names either it's all fair right it's all fair. <laughs>
This one actually comes from the Dusty Thunder subreddit and it's titled, Am I the astronaut for not forgiving my soon to be stepdaughter for stealing? Ah, crap. I, 41 female, and my fiance, 45 male, have been together going on five years. He has three kids from his previous marriage 10 year old, 16 year old female, and 19 year old. The kids and I hit it off from the start. Me and the middle daughter, I will call her Jay, became very close. We talked about everything and had a mutual love and respect for each other. Over the years, there had been some things happen that caused trust issues between Jay and her parents. Because of that, they would not let her have a cell phone. As imagined, that did not go over well with her. And she is the middle one. 16? Yeah, 16. 16-year-old didn't have a phone. Okay. February 2023, Jay was caught with a phone. My fiance told her to give it to him, which she never did, and he never followed up. She eventually told him she gave it back to the classmate who had given it to her. Again, he never verified that that was true. In April, he walked in her room in our house and caught her with it. So the first, they first caught her in February and then again in April. He finally took it. I was away for work from March through June, and when I returned, I asked where the phone was. As soon as he gave it to me, I was floored. It looked just like my previous phone. I had kept it because it had years worth of messages and pics on it from my brother who had passed away in 2020. His death broke me and I clung to anything that came from him. When the phone turned on, there was my background picture of my brother. She had stolen my phone. I was hysterical, trying to check if she had deleted my stuff off the phone. About 10 minutes later, I finally found out that thankfully she hadn't. Then the anger set in. She knew why I kept that phone, yet she still took it, knowing she could lose it or even break it, and I would have lost all those years of memories. Afterwards, everything went back to normal for her. There was never a punishment from either parent, no repercussions for what she had done. It's now January 2024, and I have still never received an apology from her. Honestly, at this point, I don't want to, because I know it would just be lip service. It wouldn't mean anything to me anymore. I don't look at her the same now. I don't enjoy being around her like I used to. I definitely don't trust her. I'm still angry and hurt, and I don't forgive her, especially since she never showed the slightest bit of remorse for what she did. So, am I the ass cannot for not forgiving and moving on like it never happened? Edit to add, one, for those worried about her not having a phone, she has had a tablet that she can text and make calls on for years now. So, what's what's the difference between that and a phone? I'm assuming that she's the phone that she stole didn't have a SIM card. It was Wi-Fi only. So she was using it just like a tablet. I don't I don't understand. She is not cut off or going without communication from her friends or family. She also has access to some social medias. She does have parental mode on the tablet and going by past issues. She needs it. Okay, there it is. Two, I have tried multiple times to talk with her. Each time I was met with no acknowledgement and silence aside from a yeah. When I asked if she understood why I was upset. But I'm going to try to talk with her again so we can try to get past this. Three, I have not banished her from my life. I'm still with her every visit. We eat together, talk, and watch TV. We even joke around and laugh some. But the closeness that we used to have is gone. I love her, but for now, there is zero trust. I don't think you can be the ask enough for not forgiving her because she hasn't asked for forgiveness yet. I think the, the difference here is you're hurt by this clearly, personally. But also, I think if you are going to be a functional parent for this girl as well, there has to be I'm not I'm not saying that you trust her. I'm not saying that uh, that you give trust freely because I, I am a believer that trust has to be earned. It should not just be given freely. You don't owe anyone your trust. But I think building a path to reestablish that as a parent would be a good thing. I think working on rebuilding and making this making this a teaching moment is what the parental role needs to be here. I understand that you're hurt. I understand that you're offended. I understand that, that this is one of your core memories that was put at risk here. And clearly she did not respect that at all. And I understand how pissed off you are about that, but you also have a responsibility to be a teacher to this child. And she is still a child. So teach her how it was wrong. Teach her how to respect other people's, memories about people that they've lost teach her teach her something that can be a value for her to carry with her moving forward and yeah she needs to regain that trust and that's one of the things she needs to be taught right now too is that trust isn't free you don't go to a vending machine and just hit a button and get trust and when you break the trust that you did have with someone it takes some pain and some time to gain it back 
This is what happens in life whenever you break someone's trust. And this is how hard it is to gain back. But I'm going to help show you how to do that and then how to avoid getting into this kind of situation in the future because it's painful to rebuild it. That's my thought here. You're not the astronaut for not forgiving her, but I also think there's another layer to this where it has to be used as a teaching moment. And when you do something like this to someone, they will carry that scar with them forever. There is, uh, I think one of the most impactful sayings that I've learned since starting to do these stories in these videos was the tree remembers what the ax forgets. And that is perfectly applicable here. Whenever you are the person inflicting harm, it doesn't mean as much to you as it, as it does to the person that you do harm to. And they are going to carry that with them forever. It sounds like there still is love. It, does, it doesn't sound like she, it doesn't sound like she hates her now. It doesn't sound like she doesn't love her anymore, but there's this, this is a, a deep trust break. Am I the astronaut for asking my wife to actually do some housework while she's at home? <laughs> oh, oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, uh, okay. I've got, I've got my brozo trigger finger just like ready here. I'm just, I'm just ready. I'll wait, but I'm ready. Throw away count as I don't want to clog up my main. <laughs> clog it up. Yep. I 35 male have been with my wife, 29 female for six years, married for two years. She's been off work the past month or so, and will be for the next few months. We agreed that while she was off work, she would do 90% of the housework as I work an eight to five job. Over the past two weeks, she has been giving me excuse after excuse as to why things like laundry aren't done, the bathroom isn't clean, and dinner hasn't been done. Some days she barely gets out of bed and her house looks like a right state. I'm I'm embarrassed when my parents come over as my mom keeps her house spotless. Last week, after I came home to only a fraction of the chores being done, I asked my wife if she was planning on actually doing the things she promised me she would do. She snapped at me, saying it had been a bad day and I could be a bit more sympathetic. I pointed out that she said when she went off work that she was going to do the housework while I was at work. It's not difficult as both my mom and my sister can easily keep their houses clean and tidy. Oh, boy, you're just heading in the right direction. You're not saying anything wrong at all, OP. Nothing. My wife blew up at me and said that I was being completely unreasonable. She went to stay with her parents, both of whom have been texting me and calling me an asshole since. My parents and my sister both think I'm justified for reacting like this. So, am I the astronaut? Oh, I, I see it in bold here and I knew it was coming. <laughs> Edit because I've already had people ask for more info. She's off work because she's 38 weeks pregnant with our first child. I don't see this as an excuse because all the women in my family have worked up until their due dates and managed to keep their homes tidy. Why can't my wife? Uh, dude. Okay, there's a lot of comments on here. So let's just go ahead and get a couple things out of the way right now. Dude is a brozo. I don't know if this is brainwashing that comes from his mother into like the expectations that this guy has coming into a marriage that, that his mother has given him or... <laughs> This worldview, these, this is a collision of worldviews that do not align. And this, this is not going to end well. He gets this as well. He gets the ask on one because this is truly just, I think it's, I think it's a mixture actually of, of being malicious and ignorant. This is, this is malicious negligence. Um, if, if there's such a thing, what the hell, man, I knew as soon as I started reading and I haven't read the story, I'm like, oh yeah, why has she been off work for that amount of time? Well, yeah, something medical, something changed. Clearly, no, she's 38 weeks pregnant and you're expecting her to get up and Cinderella her ass the whole freaking day. Cool, dude. Cool. Cool. Man, you're, you're, you're going to be a great partner to raise a baby with you jackhole. Oh, my God. OK, OP comments. I'm working five days a week and bringing home our only wage. And all I ask is that my wife contribute in the house. I worked hard to buy. Why wouldn't I be serious? Women all over the world are able to keep a home while pregnant. I don't see why she's any different. She's not struggling with her mental health. She lives in a nice home and has nice things I've worked for. Well, that equates to mental health, doesn't it? All I ask is that the house I worked hard for is clean and tidy. How am I being unrealistic? My sister had a baby last year and was able to keep her home looking presentable. All I ask my wife is for her to do the same. 
She's at home all day, so surely she has the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring up for some feedback here a likely spicy edition of Candy Thunder. I read this story and I was like, um, this remind makes me like remember that I need to take care of this man because I am lucky because this is what's out there. This is an asshole. Like, not every pregnancy is the same. This woman is obviously struggling. She can't even bend over. She's 38 freaking weeks pregnant. You cannot touch the floor. And who's messing up the house if she's in bed all day? It sounds like it's this guy, or it sounds like their house is probably fine, and he's being unrealistic. Completely unrealistic. I do not like this guy. <laughs> this is like, if I had married the asshole, this is what your life would be like. And if this is your husband, you can do better. Sorry. So I, I think that... Um... Clearly, this isn't right, and clearly, clearly, Wait, this you, is not the partner mentality. This is no. this is one of my biggest problems. With that is that it's not it's not a hey, we can do this, we can keep this thing tidied up while you're home with this. This is a <laughs> zero sympathy for what she's dealing with with her pregnancy, first of all. But right. him not being willing to help in any way, shape, or form, and just laying all that responsibility on her is the is the biggest sign of of. He has no intention of approaching this like a partner, which is the biggest red flag because you guys are getting ready to raise a tiny human together. And that requires more teamwork than any time in your life. Right? And your house is going to get freaking destroyed. Yes. Give it six months. Your house is going to be taken over by baby stuff. But also, do you know what I did the last week of my pregnancy? Nothing. Not a damn thing. This man right here, and it doesn't make him weak. It doesn't make him anything other than an amazing human being because he took care of me and he took care of our baby and this guy grow a pair and take care of your freaking wife while she grows your human for you to make a family don't tell her she needs to sit at home and clean your house because you were working from nine to five i'm sorry you have no idea what it's like for your body to not be your own and that just pisses me off i imagine that growing a human inside of you is pretty hard work i've it's never not, done it and you know what some women go through pregnancy and it's so easy. My first pregnancy, really not that bad. It was enjoyable. My labor was so easy. With Navy, complete opposite. I was in pain almost my entire pregnancy. I couldn't breathe <laughs> the last part, month. That's because she's half my child. Too. <laughs> she's half <laughs> Ascon 3, like from the get-go. But I, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't even, like walking Ugh. to the car was hard for me. And it wasn't because I had gained so much weight. It was just like where she was at. It was just, it was hard. And they were same person, completely different pregnancies. And this guy has no idea how hard life is going to be once that baby comes home and she already left. And I hope that she has the baby and stays away because this guy will not help her one bit. Well, she did leave. Yeah. She went to stay with her parents. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm like, Oh wait, what? Yeah. 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 And that that's the most painful part about all of this is that yes, whenever they have the baby, it's going to be the hardest time in both of their lives right. and you both need each other and discovering that you don't have a partner. I mean, she, this can't yeah. be the first sign it can't be the first no, sign. But that... she was working before. Well, yeah, but still. And she, what she, she went on maternity leave, and so it's like she's now responsible for like wiping your ass. I mean, come on, like no, you, you're a human too. You can help her when she's laid up. Whatever. I don't know what the word is. I hope you know if if you guys push forward here, uh, no pun intended. But if you guys push through this, uh, I I hope that he gets some time. To have to be the stay-at-home parent for a while, taking care of a baby at several different points in this child's development, because I think that's one of the best ways for um, for a dad to be able to see that that staying home is is work. Yeah. It is it is a lot of work, and you have to you have to understand that it's not easy to do that job and the other jobs of of the chore side of, of homemaking at the same time. It is not easy. And if you want to do that, it takes a lot of structure and it takes both of those partners helping each other out. It takes that. That's what it takes. And if you want your home to be, to be tidy and spotless all the time, whenever you walk in the door, you're going to have to get your dickheaded brain into action and actually do some things to facilitate making that easier instead of just bitching about it. Because guess what? That's not a solution. Bitching um, about it is not a solution. If you want something, contribute to making it happen. This man is currently uh, cleaning out Navy's closet and dresser and reorganizing the whole thing. Here's just the deal. Be, just, just because. And I didn't ask him to do it. He just jumped in and did it because everything was overflowing. 
But in, that's not the point. This guy, when you post AITA stories and you look at the OP's comments, like you can tell when someone is willing to accept advice or criticism. And this guy just doubles yeah. down How in the comments. How am I being unrealistic? Yeah, he's not even, like, why post here if you're not even going to listen to the advice that you receive back? Like, you were looking, like, you were looking for someone to tell you that you're doing the right thing, and you clearly did not get that. So instead, you're just going to be like, you guys are all wrong, and I'm the right person. Right, like, yeah. Only my opinion matters. Well, that's great. You can be single, and your opinion can matter to yourself. <laughs> Hey!